Hello, welcome to Amazing Gadgets. Today I will be reviewing the Canon EF 70 to 300 millimeter f4 to 5.6 IS USM lens. So first things first, let's get the boring specifications out of the way. Um, I got most of these off of the Canon website. So right here I currently have the lens mounted on my Canon EOS 5D Mark III. So this lens right now, according to Amazon, costs like $499, which is around $500. So it's not that cheap, but I think they're offering discounts right now if you buy them with a the body. So. Anyways, uh, this is the Canon EF 70 to 300 millimeter f4 to 5.6 IS USM lens. It is a variable aperture, so that means that when you are zooming in and out, the aperture will change. The lens has 15 elements in 10 groups. It's a micro USM motor, so it's not a ring USM. It's not as quiet. Um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna lean closer so it will be near my microphone so you can hear how loud the focusing is. Here it goes. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up or not. So I find that it is a little bit quieter than the cheap EFS lenses. Here's a EFS 18 to 55 mounted on my Canon EOS 70, and here's a comparison of this one focusing. As you can see, it is a bit louder, and I also find that this type of focusing system also works a bit faster. Uh, it, I mean, just a little bit faster. You can't really see it on video, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> the difference is so small, you won't be able to notice it. Um, so, uh, let's continue with the specifications. Uh, you can read on here, it's the minimum focusing. I don't know if you can read it. it it's kind of small. Um, it's 4.9 feet or 1.5 meters. That means... Without any extension tubes, uh, this you won't your nearest object has to be 4.9 feet or 1.5 meters away for you to focus. Uh, it is a 58 millimeter filter size, so those are pretty cheap, I think. According to Canon, without the uh, the lens hood on, the lens is three inches by 5.6 inches, and it weighs in around 22.2 ounce or 1.39 pounds. Or if you're into metrics, it's 76.5 millimeters by 142.8 millimeter, and it uh, weighs in at about 630 grams. So that is like with the front it retracted. So I'm gonna do some measurements for you here. So um, this is about five and a half inches long, but once you have it zoomed in at 300 millimeters. Uh, the lens is approximately 7.75 inches long with the thing extended. And here with the lens cap on with it at the lens at 70 millimeters, they, it's about 8 inches. And with it at 300 millimeters, with the lens hood attached, it's almost 10 and a quarter inches. So this is a fairly sturdy lens. It's 1.39 pounds, so it's not a lot, but it is very lightweight. It is plastic, not like some of those L models, which use better quality material for it, so it's light. But I can tell you it is a very sturdy lens because I banged this on walls before. It's completely fine. It's been working for over a year now for me. So definitely if you're worried about dropping it and stuff, well obviously don't drop it, but I banged it on walls before when I'm like having it hanging on my neck and I'm walking around it banged on stuff before, it's still working fine. Anyway, that's all for the specifications. Now let's, let me get in a bit closer so I can show you the features of this lens. 
So in storage, the lens hood can actually flip onto the back. So for storage, so it's shorter. All lens hoods can do that. Um, so anyways, let me take off the lens hood. And here is a lock switch. So what this does is that when you're in storage and you don't want it extending like this, you can just lock it at 70 millimeters and it won't move anymore, as you can see here. Now you can't lock it at any other uh, focal length except for 70. That's one of the sad parts about this. Now obviously the front element moves when it's focusing. So I'm, you can see it focusing here. I'm going to turn it on again to show you the focusing. So the front element does move and you can do manual focusing, but you got to flip the switch over here to manual. Even for manual focusing, it is quite loud. I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear a little bit of sound on here. And auto focusing, I just showed you. So um, here, it does have image stabilizer, so which is great. Because at 300 millimeters and you really want to shoot some wildlife, oh, you need the image stabilizer. Uh, when I turn it off, it does go blurry. So you, there is a switch for turning the image stabilizer on and off. There are also two modes to the image stabilizer. Mode 1 is for the X and Y axis movement and for mode 2 uh, it's just for the X axis. The Y axis doesn't do anything so for those panning shots that you want to use mode 2. So pretty much I'm out here. I didn't plug on my external clip on mic. I'm just going to do a quick shoot with this handheld to show you the image stabilizer on this lens. So I'm pretty much using the built-in microphone right now so the audio quality might suck a bit. So let's get started on that. I'll be zooming in on uh, that low cut tree over there. That tree. I don't know if you can see it. The monitor is really darkened in the sun here. I can't really see it. So um, let's get started. So pretty much this is at 70 millimeters. Um, let's see. All right. So I guess it's in focus now. I will be zooming in to 300 mil. And this right now the image stabilizer is on. I will be zooming in and refocusing. This is the image stabilizer on. Alright, so now I'm going to zoom out again and do the same thing with the image stabilizer off. Um, here it is with the image stabilizer off. Definitely you can see some shaking to it. Um, and now zoom in to 300 mil so you can see the tree. Definitely some shake now with the image stabilizer off. So this is pretty much uh, why you need an image stabilizer. And obviously you should never shoot handheld. So that is pretty much for the specifications. I had this lens for over a year now. I usually use it for wildlife shots. It works great, you can zoom in really close on the birds, but sometimes, you know, it's not close enough. You can never get close enough with birds, but if you're like starting out or you're an intermediate photographer on a tight budget that's doing wildlife photography, this is definitely a good lens. Compared, uh, well, I mean, compared with the price compared to the L models, you get a really good deal for this price. Anyways, um, if you have a full frame, that's great, but I think this lens works better on a 7D, one of those crop sensors. The camera I have here, the EOS 7D, because you have that crop factor in there, like a 1.6 crop factor, so you do get a closer zoom on there. Um, I think it was like, if you're on a 1.6 crop factor, I can't remember, but it's like 112 millimeters to... Let's see... Hmm. Anyways, you can do the calculation yourself with a calculator. So you just take the focal length and you multiply it by 1.6 and that's your crop. So that's your equivalent on a crop sensor camera. Um, 
I don't have a calculator with me right now, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so pretty much, uh, wildlife photography, or you could get get closer to like flowers. Um, I find this useful with extension tubes for macro. You do get like a one to one macro with this, but you should know that any lens distortions. Uh, I find some barrel distortion on this one a little bit, especially on with extension tubes under macro conditions. You could really see it in outer focus areas. But usually, if you're using it without extension tubes on wildlife, you won't notice it. It's great. So pretty much, I think I've shown you everything about this lens. Um, so now I have a mini slideshow of photos that I have taken using this lens. Uh, I have both photos using a crop sensor 7D and my Canon EOS 5D Mark III, which is a full frame sensor. I will be starting off with the 7D photos and uh, moving on to the uh, 5D afterwards. Hope you enjoy. I hope you have enjoyed that photo slideshow and I hope this review has helped you make some choice about what lens you want to get. I do 
do a lot of photography. That's why I have two cameras here. I have a lot of equipment. So I do plan on making more photography videos on this YouTube channel once in a while. I will be posting some up. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe. I will review other non-photography related stuff on here. But since most of my stuff is photography equipment, I will obviously be doing more on here. If you're a beginner photographer, I do run my own blog. Uh, I showcase a lot of photos I've taken on there and sometimes I might offer tips and tutorials on how to do a certain type of photos on there. So if you're interested, uh, the link to my blog is in the video description below. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and all product links will be in the video description below. And I will see you guys in the next video.